About $70 million worth of farm-raised trout are raised in this country each year. The leading producers in this industry are the states of Idaho, North Carolina, and California. Trout can be grown where there are supplies of high quality water ranging in temperatures from the low 50s to low 60s in degrees Fahrenheit. Springs and other groundwater sources, as well as mountain streams, can be used for year-round trout culture. Trout are grown in rearing containers, such as concrete raceways, circular tanks, and earthen ponds. The occurrence of diseases increases when trout are exposed to declining water quality, sufficient numbers of pathogens, or both of these conditions. Environmental diseases occur when water quality deteriorates as a result of overcrowding, reduced flows, temperatures above 65 degrees Fahrenheit, or inputs of sediment and organics. These factors lead to lower dissolved oxygen, elevated ammonia concentrations, and other unfavorable conditions which stress trout. These conditions also predispose trout to various infectious diseases in the presence of pathogens. Occasionally, some more virulent pathogens may attack fish even in the absence of stressful conditions. This video presents viral, bacterial, parasitic, and environmental diseases found in farm-raised trout and should help the viewer to learn how to identify trout diseases. A qualified fish health professional, however, should confirm all diagnoses and treatments. Viral diseases of trout are responsible for serious economic losses to the U.S. trout industry due to causing high mortalities and their incurable nature. Infectious hematopoietic necrosis, or IHN, and infectious pancreatic necrosis, or IPN, are the two major viruses impacting trout culture. IHN virus occurs in most every trout producing country. It is commonly seen in many parts of the Pacific Northwest in the U.S. where it presents a major disease problem. It is a rhabdovirus that is horizontally transmitted by entering the fish through the gills or intestine and affects the blood forming organs of young trout. Larger fish, nearly one pound in size, are also affected by IHN. IHN virus can also be transmitted on the surface of eggs, but egg disinfection helps to control the virus at this stage. Vertical transmission of IHN inside the eggs has not been demonstrated conclusively. Trout infected with IHN often have Popeye or exophthalmia to varying degrees. A red hemorrhagic streak may also be seen where the eye goes into the socket. Infected fish also exhibit dark coloration on various portions of their body, such as on the tail, or midsection, or front of the body. Pale gills are also commonly seen due to severe anemia caused by the virus. In advanced stages of IHN, the virus may be located along the fish's spine, causing disoriented swimming. Normally, a low percentage of IHN survivors will develop scoliosis or lateral curvature of the spine. Pale, eroded dorsal fins may also be seen after the IHN infection ends, but this clinical sign can generally be seen with other trout diseases. Internally, a bright red spleen and very pale kidney are characteristic of IHN. Internal organs are not normally swollen in fish with IHN. The abdomen may be distended due to accumulation of clear fluid in the stomach and the intestines will often contain a yellowish fluid or mucus. These clinical signs are very evident in small fish up to four to five inches in length, but to a lesser degree in larger fish. Infectious pancreatic necrosis, IPN virus, is also of economic significance to the trout industry. It is seen primarily in the eastern United States and less commonly in western states. 
However, IPN virus was a serious pathogen in western trout producing states during the 1970s and early 1980s. IPN affects mostly trout fry and fingerlings less than six months of age and seems to strike first in the fastest growing and most healthy appearing fish of the group. It can be transmitted from broodfish carriers to their embryos inside eggs and therefore cannot be eradicated by external disinfection of the eggs. The disease is also spread horizontally among fish through the water. The skin is often dark and sometimes has dark banding in various areas such as a dark tail or head or a dark tail and head with other skin surfaces pale in color. Trout infected with IPN can be observed spiraling rapidly on their long axis and then suddenly becoming very still. They also exhibit Popeye or exophthalmia, which is compared with normal eyes in the fish on the right. IPN also produces a distended abdomen due to clear yellow fluid in the body cavity or from a fluid-filled stomach. The gills, spleen, liver, and kidneys are sometimes very pale. As with virus diseases in general, there are no treatments available for IHN or IPN. However, mortalities can be reduced by minimizing stress on the trout. The most effective control of viral diseases is prevention through selection of eggs from specific pathogen-free stocks, providing good nutrition, maintaining good water quality, maintaining a fish-free water source, and excluding vectors or carriers of virus such as fish-eating birds. Bacterial diseases in trout include enteric red mouth caused by Yersinia ruckeri, furunculosis caused by Aramonas salmonocyta, bacterial kidney disease caused by Rhinobacterium salmoninarum, bacterial cold water disease caused by Cytophaga sacrophylla, columnaris caused by Flexibacter columnaris, environmentally induced bacterial gill disease, and various skin rashes thought to be caused by bacteria. The causative agent of enteric red mouth, Yersinia ruckeri, infects trout most notably in the eyes. In fact, the bacteria can be isolated from the eyes during necropsy. It causes exophthalmia, which often leads to necrosis and rupturing of the eyes, giving the appearance of large white cataracts. The skin of affected trout becomes dark. Sometimes redness in the mouth can be observed, giving the disease its name. And gills may hemorrhage, producing blood-tinged water, which is easily observed when fish are held in a bucket. The abdomen is often distended due to a fluid-filled stomach. Internally, the spleen is frequently granular and swollen, as is the kidney. The swim bladder is hemorrhagic, and the lower intestines may be inflamed and contain yellow mucus or thick fluid. ERM is capable of causing high mortalities. Yersinia ruckeri is horizontally transmitted from infected to non-infected fish and can be carried on the surface of eggs. It can be controlled by disinfecting the eggs. Commercial vaccines against Yersinia ruckeri are available and are commonly used to prevent the disease. Fish are immersed in the vaccine solution for a short period of time which provides immunity against the organism. This immunity, of course, reduces mortalities, but also reduces the frequency of antibiotic use and improves growth efficiency, both saving money for the trout grower.
Furunculosis is caused by the bacteria Aramonas salmonicida. The disease gives fish a dark color and causes distinct lesions called furuncles. Although mortalities can be high, furunculosis is not as serious a problem in the U.S. as in previous years. Rainbow trout are much less susceptible to furunculosis than our other species such as brown trout, brook trout, and salmon. A commercial vaccine against furunculosis is available but is used almost exclusively in the salmon industry as an injectable vaccine. Bacterial kidney disease is caused by the gram-positive rod Rhinobacterium salmononarum. Internal clinical signs include large white granular lesions on the kidney producing a swollen and corrugated appearance. Similar lesions can also be seen on the spleen and liver and cystic necrotic lesions can occur in the muscle. High mortality rates are not usually seen in bacterial kidney disease cases. It is usually only a problem in rainbow trout when they are grown in close contact with brook trout or brown trout that are carrying high concentrations of the pathogen. Isolation of Rhinobacterium salmononarum from an infected fish may take several weeks due to its slow growth. Specialized media are sometimes used, but immunodiagnostic techniques are now most commonly used to speed up the identification. Bacterial cold water disease caused by Cytophaga cyprophila also known as Flexibacter cyprophilus, is one of the most significant bacterial diseases of trout in the western United States. Infected fish are typically dark colored, but may be light colored in some cases. They can also have severe erosion of the caudal peduncle, causing a white necrotic patch and exposing the muscle. Cold water disease often occurs as a dual infection with IHN virus infections, so clinical signs for the two diseases are sometimes viewed as the same. Both diseases often cause nervous disorders, which can be expressed as dark and white discoloration of the skin. It can also induce the trout to swim in a whirling or disoriented pattern after the majority of the population has recovered. Bacterial cold water disease affects trout during their first year of life, but is most severe in the smaller fingerling sizes. Marginal environmental conditions along with horizontal transmission from infected fish are usually necessary for the occurrence of this disease. There is a possibility that the Cytophaga sacrophila bacteria can be transmitted on the surface of eggs. Columnaris infection caused by the bacteria Flexibacter columnaris is typically an external problem in trout, but in advanced stages, the organism can be isolated from kidneys or spleens. The disease can lead to significant mortalities. Affected fish often show a white or pale saddle type lesion around the midsection of the body. Gills are also susceptible to columnaris. Columnaris is most commonly seen at temperatures above 15 degrees centigrade, 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Fungus infections, which usually occur on trout at lower temperatures, look similar to columnaris, but can be easily distinguished from it microscopically. Fungus has thick, motionless, rod-like structures called hyphae, while columnaris consists of long, flexing bacteria stacked up in columns. Bacterial gill disease is one of the most common problems associated with trout culture and involves naturally occurring mixed species of soil and waterborne bacteria including mixobacteria and flavobacteria. It is usually a result of water quality degradation such as low dissolved oxygen or elevated ammonia concentrations in the rearing environment. These factors are caused by overcrowded rearing containers or unsanitary conditions. Low level mortality is one of the first signs normally observed. Improving water quality by reducing densities or cleaning the raceways usually corrects the problem. 
Bacterial gill disease has the potential to cause large mortalities if not corrected quickly, especially in the youngest fish. Bacterial gill disease is characterized by swollen gills covered with debris, including environmental bacteria. The extensive swelling causes the gill covers, or opercles, to flare away from the trout's body, and the gills can be seen protruding from the opercles. The bacteria Flavobacterium branchiophyllum and Cytophaga aquatilis have been isolated externally from trout with bacterial gill disease. Skin rashes found on cultured trout may be caused by bacteria or similar organisms such as rickettsia. Strawberry disease is characterized by bright red focal hemorrhaging on the fish's lateral or ventral surfaces. It often occurs on the same farms year after year. And although bacteria are usually not isolated from the fish, antibiotic treatments have been effective in relieving the symptoms. Given time, strawberry disease usually runs its course and goes away on its own after about six weeks. Another skin rash resembles strawberry disease, but the hemorrhaging is in a more diffuse pattern. Other variations of these two diseases have been reported. Mortalities are not associated with these skin rashes, but the lesions present a marketing problem, which commands a significant amount of attention. External parasites can also be a problem in cultured trout, especially by improving water quality or the disease condition may recur. Epistylus and heteropolaria often appear as a cottony fungus-like mass on the skin or gills of fish and cause tissue irritation and damage. They are paratrichous protozoans with branching non-contractile stalks. The bell or vase-shaped part of epistylus has adoral cilia used for feeding. Trichophria is a sedentary suctorian protozoan that has tentacles projecting from a body containing dark orange colored pigment granules. The tentacles appear like pins stuck into a pincushion. Many times the tentacles are not present and only the dark pigment granules reveal Trichophria's identity. It parasitizes the gills of fish and reproduces by budding, forming a small modal teletroch. This budding process is rarely seen during routine diagnostic procedures. These modal teletrochs can easily be mistaken for trichodyna, except they do not have the denticular ring and thorn-like projections. Another protozoan parasite infecting trout is ichthyobodo, 
formerly known as costia. It is only about the size of a red blood cell. It has a comma or teardrop shape. Instead of cilia, ichthyobodo uses flagella for motility, causing it to swim in a spiraling corkscrew pattern. The flagella are also used for attachment to the host fish. Ichthyobodo appears to flicker like a candle flame when attached to the host. The skin fluke, the gyrodactylus, often occurs on the skin and fins of trout and can cause serious harm when in heavy concentrations on small fish. It attaches to fish with a pair of large hooks and 16 marginal hooklets located on its hafter at the posterior end of the parasite. Gyrodactylus has two lobes on its anterior end and usually carries an embryo in utero with hooks and all. The crustacean Salmoncola is a copepod parasite of trout. It has arm-like structures with a swollen bulla used for attachment to the fish. The female has two egg sacs posteriorly. It usually occurs in the gills or in the mouth of larger trout and can cause problems if concentrations become high enough. Death may sometimes result. Salmon cola erodes the fish's tissue at its point of attachment, causing noticeable notches in the gills. The fungus saprolegnia is commonly found as a secondary infection on trout and has a cottony appearance on the skin of fish. It may also be found on gills. It typically infects fish after sexual maturation and related behaviors such as fighting and nipping. Skin damage from handling or sunburn may also be followed by fungal infection. Fungus has characteristic hyphae as seen microscopically. Its reproductive structures called sporangia contain motile zoospores which are able to locate and infect a fish host. Internal parasites also cause significant problems in trout culture. Proliferative kidney disease is caused by the Myxosporian protozoan parasite called PKX. The parasite elicits a severe inflammatory response in the fish, causing the kidney to be enlarged to varying degrees. The kidney may even appear gray in color and uneven or ropey in texture. The spleen also becomes very enlarged and granular. The liver and other internal organs, as well as the gills, are often pale due to anemia. Whirling disease of trout is caused by the Myxosporian Myxobolus cerebralis formerly called Myxosoma cerebralis. This pathogen has been isolated in a number of trout producing states of the U.S., but has been found to be manageable through rearing of fish up to approximately six inches in length in Myxobolus free water supplies. This allows cartilaginous tissues to develop during the fish's early life stages which are susceptible to Myxobolus infection. Infected trout often have black tails and deformed spines. Some infected individuals swim in a whirling pattern. The disease is diagnosed microscopically by the presence of spores in the cartilage. Environmental diseases also cause substantial losses on trout farms. They can be avoided easier than infectious diseases but if left unchecked, infectious diseases may follow. Gas bubble disease is caused by supersaturation of gas in the water. 
the fish's swim bladder may inflate and fail to deflate, leaving the trout unable to properly orient himself in the water or to descend beneath the water surface. Popeye or exophthalmia can also occur as a result of gas bubbles collecting behind or even within the eyes. Reducing total gas pressure by using degassing columns before water enters the rearing containers should correct the gas bubble problem. Bacterial gill disease, as discussed earlier, is also mainly attributed to environmental degradation. Sunburn can also occur due to intense sunlight combined with clear, shallow water. A white necrotic patch of skin can be observed. Prevention is the best line of defense against diseases in any cultured animal. The cost of reduced growth, mortalities, and the use of chemical treatments is usually higher than preventive measures. Providing the necessary environmental conditions and well-balanced nutrition to maintain healthy stocks of trout is more cost-effective in the long run. However, even the best managed operations occasionally experience disease problems. Production facilities are continually trying to maximize the use of their water. This eventually results in overcrowding, which requires treatments to correct disease problems. Use only approved compounds to treat food fish such as trout. A current list of drugs approved by the Food and Drug Administration can be obtained from your local aquaculture extension agent, U.S. Trout Farmers Association, or the FDA. Use of this video will help the viewer accurately identify trout diseases. This information, along with a diagnosis from a qualified fish health professional, will provide the tools to successfully address disease problems when they occur. Employ a holistic approach when correcting diseases. Make adjustments in environmental conditions first and treat fish with drugs as a last resort. Administer treatments according to labeled directions and monitor the health of your fish on a regular basis. Recognizing and acting on the early stages of disease can result in reduced fish loss and increased production. Hi, I'm Bob Derbero, State Extension Aquaculture Specialist at Kentucky State University in Frankfort, Kentucky. Aquaculture, or fish farming, is a major new agricultural growth industry. Global demand for fish is expected to increase 70% in the next 35 years, and the amount of fish harvested from wild fish resources will not be able to supply this increased market. To meet the world's need for fish, aquaculture production will have to increase sevenfold by the year 2025. Diseases of farm-raised fish limit the pounds of fish that can be produced, and this is very costly to the farmer. 
Accurately identifying and treating a fish disease can save a farmer as much as $5,000 per acre in a given production year. This video will help teach the viewer to accurately identify fish diseases. The resulting accurate treatments will save many fish farmers thousands of dollars a year. Parasites are usually regarded as secondary fish pathogens. Although this is often true, the presence of a significant number of parasites can lead directly to mortalities, can stress fish to the point where a bacterial infection can occur, and can prevent fish from eating. Significant parasite loads can also prevent fish from being cured of another disease, such as internal bacteria. It is therefore important to identify fish parasites in order for an appropriate treatment to be administered. The most common warm water fish parasites can be classified as protozoa, such as ick, monogenea, like gill flukes, digenetic trematodes, the grubs, cestodes, or tapeworms, copepods, such as anchorworms, and fungi. Protozoans are small, single-celled organisms and are the most significant of all the fish parasites. In fact, they kill and debilitate more people in the world than any other group of disease organisms. Most protozoans possess cilia or flagella for motility and feed either on the host fish's cells and mucus or on surrounding debris while being attached to the fish or moving around on the surface of the fish. The most notorious of the protozoa is Ick, whose Latin name, Ichthyotherius multifilius, means fish harvester. It is capable of killing large numbers of fish in relatively short periods of time. Ick is larger than most other protozoans, and an individual organism can actually be seen without magnification. They often appear as grains of salt sprinkled on the fish's skin. Their presence is confirmed by microscopic examination of a wet mount of the gills or skin scraping. Ick has a characteristic rolling motion caused by the movement of the holotrichia cilia covering its whole surface. It also has a distinguishing C-shaped nucleus. This adult ick organism is excreting some of its cellular contents. This smaller ictomite, or swarmer, has recently hatched out of a cyst. It must quickly find a fish host within a day or two to assure its survival. Once established on a host, ick organisms frequently embed themselves under the host epithelium, which helps them evade chemical treatment. Prompt treatment is therefore very important. Trichodina is a highly modal saucer-shaped paratrichus protozoan with cilia along its margin. It is characterized by an internal denticular ring with thorns projecting into the center of the cell. A few trichodina are often found even on healthy fish, while heavy infestations on the gills and or skin can cause significant mortalities. They are frequently found on fish in a stressful eutrophic environment. Treatment of trichodina must often be followed by improving water quality or the disease condition may recur. Ambifria, formerly called Cyphidia, is a sessile barrel-shaped paratrichus protozoan with rings of cilia around its midsection and oral cavity. Ambifria's adoral cilia sweep food into its mouth. Heavy loads of this parasite on the fish's gills can cause blockage of oxygen flow and extreme irritation to the fish. It is often found on fish in crowded eutrophic conditions. Apiosoma glossatella is similar to Ambifria, but instead of a barrel shape, it has a vase-like shape and a round nucleus. Trichophria is a sedentary Sectorian protozoan that has tentacles projecting from a body containing dark or orange pigment granules. The tentacles appear like pins stuck into a pin cushion. Many times the tentacles are not present and only the dark pigment granules reveal Trichophria's identity. It parasitizes the gills of fish and reproduces by budding, 
forming a small modal trophozoite. This budding process is rarely seen during routine diagnostic procedures. These modal trophozoites can easily be mistaken for trichodina, except they do not have the denticular ring and thorn-like projections. Ichthyoboto, or costia, is a very small teardrop-shaped flagellated protozoan that often lines up along the edge of the gills or skin. They are about the size of red blood cells. Ichthyoboto are attached to the host cells by flagella and flicker like a candle flame. When not attached to the fish, they swim in an erratic pattern and appear as a lopsided wheel. Ichthyoboto are commonly reported on catfish raised in crowded cage culture conditions. Another protozoan, Chelodonella, is much larger than Ichthyoboto, but swims in a similar manner, appearing as a lopsided wheel. It is a holotrichus parasite with parallel rows of cilia running the length of the cell. Chelodonella is found on the gills and skin of fish. Penagaya is a non-modal mixosporidian protozoan that is found in cysted and gills. The cysts are packed with sperm-shaped spores, which are frequently found released outside of the cysts. Hanagaya cysts are commonly found in fish gills, usually causing no problems. Heavy concentrations, however, can sometimes lead to mortalities. These large white cysts are not typical for Hanagaya, but are sometimes found on the gills. Epistylus and heteropolaria often appear as a cottony, fungus-like mass on the skin of fish. They are paratrichous protozoans with branching, non-contractile stalks. The bell or vase-shaped part of epistylus has adoral cilia used for feeding. Proliferative gill disease, PGD, is often called hamburger gill disease because of the gill's similarity in appearance to hamburger meat. In spite of the damaged gills, the skin of catfish affected by PGD often appears very healthy. The gills lose their structure due to the presence of a small mixosporian protozoan in the cartilage. The parasite creates a notch in the cartilage or a complete erosion of the cartilage, which appears as a hole or missing gap when viewed under the microscope. Hyperplasia of gill epithelial cells also occurs. This parasite has recently been identified as a species of Orantiactinomyxin. Orantiactinomyxin uses the oligochete Darrow digitata as a host, and it is speculated that catfish are merely an aberrant or unnatural host. Fish in new ponds are more likely to become infected by the hamburger gill parasite perhaps because new ponds often have a greater than normal number of Darrow digitata in the bottom muds. Fish affected by PGD tend to hang around the shallow edge of the pond and often congregate around inflowing water. Pumping water across the levee from a healthy pond to the infected pond seems to reduce losses from PGD. Maintaining high dissolved oxygen concentrations also helps to reduce losses. Monogenetic trematodes, such as gill flukes, can cause fish mortalities, especially when occurring in heavy concentrations on small fish. Diagnostic characteristics include two pairs of eye spots, two pairs of anchors connected by bars, and 14 marginal hooklets. Cletodiscus is commonly found on channel catfish and is notorious for occurring in large numbers on fingerlings which are grossly overstocked at densities sometimes approaching 1 million per acre, 10 times higher than the recommended stocking rate. Such an environment is highly eutrophic and is conducive to the presence of these gill flukes. Gyrodactylus ictaluri is a skin fluke that can cause problems on smaller fish. It lacks eye spots 
has two anchors, and often has a larva in utero. Gyrodactylus often occurs on the fins, barbels, or head of the infected fish. The digenetic trematode, yellow grub, Clinostomum marginatum, is found in the flesh of various kinds of fish. It has an oral sucker and a ventral sucker or acetabulum. Yellow grub is not known to kill fish but presents an appearance problem. The metacercaria or larval fluke occurs in fish while the adult stage of the worm develops in the digestive tract of birds such as the great blue heron. Snails serve as the first intermediate host of yellow grub, fish are the second intermediate host, and birds serve as the definitive host. Because of this life cycle, the parasite can be controlled by eliminating or reducing the numbers of birds and or snails by legal means. The white grub, Postodiplostoma minimum metacercaria, occur in the kidney or other internal organs of infested fish, most notably bluegill sunfish. The white grub life cycle also includes snails and birds, so it too can be controlled in the same manner as the yellow grub. The eye fluke, Diplostomum spathaceum, occurs in the lens of catfish and can impair the fish's vision. Studies, however, have shown that this visual handicap does not significantly impair the fish's ability to attain food. This Diplostomum is a stained lab specimen. The bass tapeworm, Proteocephalus amblyopleides larva, or Plerocercoid, occurs in internal organs of largemouth bass and bluegill. It is characterized by four or five distinct suckers on the scolex. Bass can become sterile from damage caused by migration of the larval tapeworm through their ovaries and by scar tissue formed in the host as a response to this parasite. This problem is controlled by periodically rotating new bass broodstock into the hatchery while culling the older bass brood fish. The adult bass tapeworm, shown here in a standard petri dish, matures in the intestine of an adult largemouth bass. Its eggs develop in the distal segments or proglottids of the adult worm. The catfish tapeworm, Corallobothrium, also has four suckers, but they are covered by large folds, giving the scolex a cauliflower appearance. When occurring in large numbers, it can cause mechanical blockage of the digestive tract of small catfish. Lernia, or anchorworm parasite, attaches commonly to the base of fins on cyprinid fish such as bait minnows, goldfish, and carp. It also occurs on the skin of catfish that are stocked with cyprinid fish. The anchor-shaped head of the adult burrows into the skin for attachment. And long egg sacs are located on the posterior end of the parasite. The parasites appear to the naked eye as tiny sticks or debris on the skin surface. The adult anchorworm usually causes little harm, but heavy loads of larval lernia on the gills may cause serious injury on young fish. Argulus, fish louse, Ergasilus, and Actheres are other crustacean parasites found on warm water fish, but they are not associated with causing serious harm to the fish. The fungus, Saprolegnia, is commonly found as a secondary infection on warm water fish. It has a cottony appearance on the skin of fish and has characteristic hyphae as seen with a microscope. Saprolegnia is also found on the skin of catfish in a condition called winter saprolegniosis, or winter kill. The fungus is able to invade the catfish as cold weather sets in and the fish's immune system is impaired. It produces a general state of dehydration. The skin becomes dry and lacking in mucus, while the eyes often are sunken in, a condition called endophthalmia. Winter saprolegniosis is more prevalent during very cold winters, especially in larger, somewhat crowded fish, 
that have experienced significant stress late in the summer growing season. Affected catfish often linger in shallow areas around the pond's edge. Glochidia are larvae of clams and mussels. They parasitize fish gills as a normal part of their life cycle. Heavy concentrations of glochidia can severely stress fish and may lead to death. This red nematode, called camelanus, protrudes from the anus of fish. When several are placed in a petri dish with water, they form a big knot. Although their appearance may lead to marketing problems, they are not known to cause serious problems in the host fish. Bacteria are responsible for the greatest number of mortalities in warm water fish culture. Most bacterial pathogens of fish are gram-negative rods. Some gram-positive bacteria also cause fish diseases. Following are descriptions of four significant gram-negative rods and one acid-fast bacteria. Enteric septicemia of catfish, or ESC, is caused by the bacteria Edwardsiella ictiluri. Infected catfish are lethargic and sometimes exhibit a head-chasing tail swimming behavior. At times, the sick fish will hang in the water column with their head up and tail down. This is called stargazing. External red and white skin lesions and petechial hemorrhaging are characteristic of ESC. Red or white lesions at the cranial foramen are often seen in chronic cases. and they can progress into holes in the fish's head. ESC is sometimes called hole in head disease. A swollen fluid-filled abdomen and a Popeye or exophthalmic condition are also commonly seen. Internally, the Edwards yellow ictiluri infection causes a mottled liver sometimes with white necrotic spots, hemorrhagic muscles, and ascites in the body cavity. Columnaris infections are caused by the myxobacteria known as either Cytophaga columnaris or Flexobacter columnaris. The infection can be external or internal. Fish with external columnaris often have a white saddleback area with an oval center where the bacteria are concentrated. The color of heavy columnaris growth is usually yellowish brown as shown here in the mouth of a catfish. Gills can be infected in the same manner. A wet mount preparation of columnaris viewed under a microscope will show the long flexing rods forming haystacks. Modal Aramonas septicemia is caused by Aramonas hydrophila. This disease is a common internal bacterial problem found on a broad range of fish species. Clinical signs vary widely, but chronic cases frequently involve large open lesions. Ulcerative disease of goldfish is caused by a non-pigment producing strain of Aramonas salmonocida bacteria. This systemic infection has manifested itself as a lateral ulcer on this aquarium goldfish. Mycobacterium marinum, also called fish handler's disease, is an internal acid-fast bacterial infection usually found in fish held in closed system tanks using recirculated water purified with a biofilter. The bacteria apparently thrives in this environment and can cause high mortalities in species such as hybrid striped bass raised for food and fathead minnows used for environmental toxicology testing. Clinical signs include an extremely enlarged spleen shown here in a hybrid striped bass. The extent of this splenomegaly can be noted by comparing the enlarged spleen with a normal one. A white liver with small red spots is also indicative of Mycobacterium marinum infections.
Feeding medicated feed is often recommended to treat systemic bacterial infections. Bacteria, however, sometimes evade antibiotic treatment or the host immune system by hiding inside a macrophage of the host fish. Channel catfish virus, or CCV, is found in channel catfish fingerlings that are six inches long or smaller. Outbreaks occur when water temperatures are at or above 20 degrees centigrade or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. It is a warm weather disease of small catfish. A swollen abdomen filled with ascites and exophthalmia are characteristic of CCV. Infected fish also exhibit a stargazing behavior. Channel catfish ovary, or CCO cells, grown in tissue culture flasks, are used to detect the presence of CCV. If the virus is present in the sample introduced onto these CCO cells, a cytopathic effect will occur. This time-lapse sequence shows the formation of syncytia, or enlarged multinucleated cells, which are a result of the channel catfish virus causing the cytopathic effect on the channel catfish ovary cells. Several preventive measures can be taken to avoid the occurrence of fish diseases. Don't overstock or stock with wild fish or any fish harboring a disease. Monitor water quality and prevent or treat poor water quality conditions. Also, avoid handling fish in hot, stressful weather. All disease problems should be treated promptly and accurately based on the diagnosis and recommendation of a qualified fish health professional.